So. Hmm. Tell me a story. In my experience, the absolute best parts of the supernatural family is obviously A, the enthusiasm, B, the community and kindness. And one of my favorite things is watching total strangers find each other throughout the world, globally, throughout North America, come to these conventions and really interact and become really close friends as a result for their enthusiasm for the show or an actor or whatever. Uh, my name is David Hayden Jones and I played a character named Arthur Ketch, who is uh, basically a monster assassin and sort of half spy, half uh, assassin for the British men of letters. I know a lot of people who talk about their favorite shows as being like just a way to sort of recenter themselves when the world outside is crazy or they're stressed out. I mean, A New Hope, Star Wars was that for me. You just have this like sweet spot of like, it hits all your notes, the dopamine in your brain calms you down. Obviously you're sitting on the couch or in bed, you're already relaxing yourself and you get to escape into fantasy and storytelling and uh, characters. There is nothing in the world wrong with that. It's beautiful. It goes right back to the storytellers and the, the jokesters around the campfire, right? You know, with Grog. Hey, Grog, tell a story about Mammoth Hunt today. Okay, here we go. And, uh, you know, storytelling is so a part of who we are as human beings and, and collective storytelling and collective listening uh, as an audience. That is as primal as it gets. And so... When you have that shared experience of delight and thrill and sadness and emotional connection to character and story, these are massive archetypes and archetypes help us guide us through life. And you can't put too small of a point on how great storytelling can really affect your philosophy, your character, your morals, your ethics, and your sense of community. Hi. Uh, my name is Sammy Liu, and I have been a massive Supernatural fan since it first debuted, in which I believe I was eight or nine years old. So I've been a fan from the very, very beginning. Also, come to think of it, I don't think watching Supernatural when you're eight or nine years old is exactly a good idea. Come on, let's say goodnight to your brother. Night, Sam. So for those who don't know, Supernatural is a show that revolves around two brothers, uh, Sam and Dean, who become monster hunters after their mom uh, got killed by a demon um, when they were only children. And along the way, they fight monsters of all kinds, vampires, werewolves, shapeshifters, down to the devil himself. The interesting way of how I got into Supernatural wasn't exactly, I wasn't exactly seeking out Supernatural because I liked the genre of it. I sought out Supernatural because when I was younger, I was a, I was a big fan of all the typical things that kids watch. I myself was into Power Rangers, SpongeBob SquarePants, those kind of shows. But I went to school carrying around a Power Rangers backpack for a while in like fourth or fifth grade. And I got teased about it a lot, saying like, oh, Sammy likes Power Rangers. That's so stupid. Good start, buddy. Good start. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're the Power Rangers! <laughs> Wrong show. <laughs> it's down the hall. Um, I've watched more Power Rangers in the last two months than I have in the last 35 years of my life. My kiddos... Why? Because Tom and Shep are all about the Power Rangers. They don't watch the Power Rangers. 
No, they don't yet, but I'm trying to get them into it. But I, I Let's say, watch something Daddy likes. <laughs> Shut up, kids. We're watching the Power Rangers, I'll tell you. <laughs> Not true. Uh, that's the first time I've ever heard Red Pop. I've never heard that. You're the Power Rangers. Why would you? <laughs> it came. It came. Right, but you just said I've never heard that. Like you should have heard that before. It's been ten years. Why would somebody say you're the Power Rangers? That's good, not me. Because she's obviously in the wrong hall. Um. So, because I kind of felt like, kind of like, I guess you could say, offended in a sense. I went on this like this mission to be like okay i'm gonna find a tv show that's so not appropriate for my age but that i can watch and then kind of go hey look at me like i'm watching a really cool manly show that's only for adults so i'm not watching some kids related stuff interestingly i didn't find supernatural right away when i went to go on that mission to find a new show to watch because at the time i was still watching power rangers and i was i just watched um the 12th season of power rangers was starting to wrap up near the end of its season and then my brother jim was a big fan of the show smallville which jensen ackles also happened to be on for a season before he booked supernatural i had watched the last episode of the fourth season on a vhs tape that he recorded the episode on shortly after i saw a promo for supernatural and the first thing that came across my mind was, okay, the teaser shows a badass car with two brothers that look really tough, that fight monsters, and it looks so horrific and scary, that when I saw the promo for the pilot episode, I kind of went, you know what, this is probably what I'm looking for, so I'll tune in on September 13th and see what I think about it. <laughs> Living to talk about it. Saddle my hands for now. Supernatural the series premiere tomorrow at 9 8 Central on the WB Tuesday. And long and behold, I watched the pilot, loved it, stayed with it for 15 years, and here we are. I think the unique thing about Supernatural is that everybody who watches it can take away something different away from it whether that be a different storyline or from a different character or from whatever monster they fight or whatever setting the show takes place or what the story of that particular episode is personally for me i was mainly drawn by the overarching story of how Sam and Dean were able to overcome any obstacles that came about their way. More particularly, I think, how they really dealt with how they responded to how the public was reacting to what they were doing. What's interesting about Sam and Dean is that, yes, they're saving people on a weekly basis and killing the monsters that are hunting down innocent people. But what I found interesting, especially in the early seasons of the show, is that not everybody was on the Sam and Dean train. A lot of people thought that Sam and Dean were a threat and decided to go after them. Sam and Dean, despite facing these obstacles and having a lot of people pin them as the bad guys, were in fact, where in reality, they're actually the heroes. I find that very empowering because in reality, you could be doing the right thing all the time, but people will still perceive you as the bad guy. And I find that very powerful, not just for myself watching it but for anybody who watches the show who might feel weak or feel like the world is against them if i can put if i can try to attempt to put it into words um the the what touched me is they, they it didn't feel like they were clapping for me it felt like they were clapping with me mm -hmm. like they we were they, it felt like a like that's been part of the SPN family <clears throat> is it hadn't been like look at us you're welcome no. you're welcome it's been like Thank, why are you thinking? It was me? a celebration of what we'd all built. It's, yeah, it was a it was a family affair of like, hey, you know, I'm a cog in the wheel too. Like, we wouldn't exist without you. It's legitimate 
We wouldn't exist without them, and I guess they as a fandom wouldn't exist if we didn't do what we did. So it felt like a communal, like, hey, almost like Sam and Dean, like, hey, good job. Thanks, man. Good job back at you. All right, let's get to work. So I, the story about why I sort of rebranded, and it's kind of like my thing in general, um, I'm not a huge fan of the word fanatic. Um, I'm always curious about like just the power dynamic of cult or the self-imposed power dynamic when people put people on pedestals and we've seen it with our politics. We've seen it with a bit of celebrity culture. And what's been nice about the conventions is I really like human interaction. And when you can see body language and facial cues and intonation and voice, which is what I don't like about the online world where you take away 85% of how we communicate as human beings. Sam, Dean, what, no hellos, how are yous? No time, the egg catch. And as I was just telling Jack, I did in fact manage to expropriate the egg from a certain Hungarian rare weapons collection. Yeah, uh, uh, our Pad Valka, we, we got the messages, but so? What's really nice is people are gonna behave much differently when they're in person. And I've been welcomed so kindly, so generously at these conventions and saw regular people and you start seeing the same regular people and then you have interactions with them. You have really nice in-depth conversations with them, especially at the like meet and greets, the smaller, more intimate, but even sometimes like little exchanges at the autograph table. Like it's a real genuine live human interaction. And so my dist taste for the word fan and also the word follower. I don't want anyone to follow me. You know, like there's just something like, you know, Peter Piper about that. It's just like, if you're into my work, I'm so grateful if you say so. If you don't dig who I am, that's cool too. I just don't understand a culture where people go out of their way to go up to complete strangers and tell them they they suck. So I will never understand that. Um, but that's why I like the extended family and the kindness and the sharing and the enthusiasm for like what, what feels like a family reunion. You know, you're going to a big picnic, you're taking some pictures and I'm, and so I'm like, Hey cousins, it's the cousins. You know, I don't, you know, you're a fifth cousin. I don't know you that well, but I know you dig this family. So, uh, it's nice to see you again. So that's my whole, uh, philosophy around that. How you doing cousins? That's my new thing I say now. Because I feel like they're family reunions. So these are all my cousins. <laughs> Hi, cousins. Isn't that sweet? Okay. Like, I recognize your face, but I don't remember your name. And he went into a weird West Virginia accent. I don't know why. Because I love my cousins. <laughs> also called siblings. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. My cousin's my sister. Also, the charity aspect, which was obviously uh, pioneered by the incredible uh, Misha Collins, taking this energy, pivoting it, and um, channeling it into some really good back into extended communities, whatever the cause is. And that was probably the most exhilarating thing, gift that the, uh, the fandom gave to me, which was pushing me into doing something out of my comfort zone that I never thought in my wildest dreams, I would be creating a shirt or a gear or a logo that would then impact so many others. I mean, I was literally pushed uh, in the best way, encouraged by social media to, to pick a charity, pick a movement, and to try to do something with it. And I wouldn't have done that on my own or even thought that I would have the power to do that or the platform or utility, if that makes sense. And so that was very rewarding for me. And it was, that was incredible. And it, the fandom brought out the best in me. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that experience. So again, this thing all just happened organically through social media and particularly in Twitter when I was trying to do the experiment of, you know, okay, I really don't like social media, but I'm going to try to make the best out of it. I'm going to try to really steer it towards um, some positivity, but also like, you know, Ketch has been a very controversial character from the start. Um, people, some people like him, some people don't like him. That's fine. So, I mean, I was even getting my tires kicked as soon as Ketch landed. Like, people don't know who I was, they didn't like the character. Da, da, da. Then when it started, like, growing, and that's how much of an internet noob I was, 
is I started seeing all these less than threes, whatever, be like, hey, you're less than three, da, 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 less than three. And it was just like scrolling in my thing. And I was like, what is happening? What is the Like, I, I actually thought, I mean, my original thing was I thought it was a fart emoji. Like, you know, it was like the blast of air. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, you're like, you stink. I was like, what? Uh, why? It's like, oh, people are so mean. And, and then, uh, and I was like, I don't, how am I such a dummy? Like, because I had text and phones, but I just never really like, I don't like using emojis or didn't, I've been forced to. I, I don't, it just slipped through the cracks somehow. I know it sounds so dumb and I'm so noob. Yeah, it's kind of funny talking to a messenger of God on a cell phone. It's you know, like watching a hell's angel ride a moped. This isn't funny, Dean. The voice says I'm almost out of minutes. Okay, all right. I, and then I thought, because Jared and Jensen, I thought this was an internet slang for rating someone. Like Jared and Jensen would be tens and Misha, and I'd be like less than three. We're like, oh, you're, why are you even trying this job? I mean, obviously we figured it out really quickly and then we had a laugh about it. And then this one uh, person said, this is what me and my partner call each other as love and it's heart. Da, da, da. So then it just became its own joke. And then when I was pushed, not pushed, encouraged, challenged uh, to create kind of a message, um, you know, one of the things that came to me, what's always true is, is basic human rights for everyone, no matter your identity or, or race or, or sexually identify or gender queer or old, young, hum, humanity, humanity, right? Love is love. And my spiritual path on that journey, um, that love is the only thing, love is God, God is love. And humanity, for humanity's sake, um, all human rights and I just was like okay less than three equals love like make a cute equation because it was mathematical nerd stuff and that's how it came to be and it just sort of happened so organically through the conversations online and then my design and architecture background I was like I want to make a graphic logo that kind of encapsulates that and there we are what I love about Supernatural is that you're not really limited to just one character that you could see yourself as. I do find myself relating to a myriad of so many characters from the show, whether that be allies of Sam and Dean's or even down to vil down to the villains, even villains that I don't like. Because with every character I see on the show, I see something I feel like I could draw from. With that said, I think the character I identify with the most is uh, Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester. Not necessarily just because we're, we both have the name Sam and we are both the younger brother um, out of the two because I do have an older brother who I love dearly and who I have, have a lot of fun with. But I mainly am drawn to Sam because of what his character struggles internally. I found his arc in the fourth season of the show where he was very concerned that if he was starting to become the villain of the story because he was addicted to something that he couldn't control. He was getting this fear if he was slowly going to start turning into the bad guy. And I think in my own personal life, that's something I really identified with and was always worried that what if I am in actuality the villain of my own story. And that's a very scary thing that I don't think just... I go through, but I think that a lot of people go through. I did. It didn't pan out that way. Sorry, kid. Sorry, kid? That's what you have to say? It's all we ever wanted. We were so close. You got away from Dad. You quit hunting. You were going to become a lawyer and get married. Why'd you blow it? Look. They killed Jessica. Yeah. And if you hadn't run off with Dean, if he'd been there to protect her, she'd still be alive. I know. You think Jess would want you to turn into this? She loved you. You think she would be happy you using her as an excuse? I'm sorry. I am. But life doesn't turn out the way you thought it would when you were 14 years old. We were never going to be normal. We were never going to get away. Grow up. So 
you're going to, you're going to hear this a lot from a lot of people. And, you know, obviously um, when you're talking to people who work on in Hollywood or on in show business, there's, there's going to be this narrative and, you know, it's the fluff piece or whatever. The nature that supernatural is an incredibly welcoming collegial friendly set. Those, those legends, those rumors, those stories are a hundred percent true. I've never shown up on a set where I was greeted so warmly, so kindly, and so interested as uh, J2M, Jared Jensen and Misha to a point. Uh, kind, collaborative, interested in me as a person, very jovial, very collegial, and of course, humorous. Chupacabra. 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 He doesn't know how to say chupacabra. Chupacabra. It's like a, it's like a, a bra and a chupa. So a bra, chupa, chupa, chupa. Chupacabra. 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 They're all such incredibly intelligent guys, but they're also incredibly kind, interested, and just fun loving like i mean that's the thing about the set it's just we get to make this show we love this show we love our cast we love our crew and we're so welcoming come in and play in our sandbox and that was like day one the first scene i ever shot was catch out in the woods at night showing the stuff in his bentley so that was my first scene with all like jensen jared and misha in the woods uh showing like the 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 egg and the, the the gun and all that sort of stuff at the Bentley. Just really kind, interested people and just always a good laugh and always good fun. So you can't ask for anything more than that in a cast. You also wrote a song, which I heard to my knowledge was something that didn't even cross your mind until you became a part of the show. So what's, what's with, uh, what's with, what's with the song and that, that every yeah. that this really catchy tune that everybody just can't yeah. get out of their heads. <laughs> like you ha must, you hate it. You hate to love it. You love to hate it. Um, but I have this habit of just making these like little, little jingles for my friends and all my producer and music friends. You're like, dude, you just, you make these catchy little jingles. Like what's up with that? And I was like, I just like the sing. I'm a goofball. What do, what, what do you want? From me? I'm also just, I've also done a lot of improv music and I, I, I was sort of, guested a lot of bands and stuff in college. Um, so I was with Gil McKinney at Jib. And so we were in this panel and I just started singing, making, bacon, making, making, bacon, like that. And then literally, and so we had a laugh and it was no big deal and we had made a joke out of it. And then the day after, I literally had all the people who were at that panel. I must have had, I don't know, over 20 performances of my little jingle I had made on stage back at me on social media and Twitter and stuff. Like people like on stairs, like in their hotel rooms, like singing, making, bacon at me. And then it just became this thing where they're like, you should write that song. You should make that song. And like... I, I'm like, I am never not one to uh, say no to a dare, especially if it's creative dare. And uh, and I was like, how do you make that into a song? And I was like, eh, I'm not going to do it. And then I got invited back to Jib next year, the year later. And, and I was like, well, what if I was shooting this Hallmark movie? And I was like, I had a lot of long drives. And I was just like, just mulling it over in my head, like making, bacon, making, making, bacon. And then I was like, could I actually make a song out of that? And then it just became this just weirdo art experiment of like, could I actually make a song? Could I write a song? I love to write. I love to create. I have incredible music friends. <laughs> And so it became like this kind of half goof, you know what I mean? Like totally a half goof joke, but also a dare. But then also like, if I'm gonna do it, I wanna try to make it like, like a decent passable song. So it's just like this kind of weird art experiment I kind of just did for myself, but completely inspired by 
interactions with the fans and a weird, odd improvisational uh, moment on stage. And then again, just like, okay, I'm going to make this thing and put it on Spotify and sell it on vinyl or whatever. And, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll just take all that profit and send it towards the uh, AFA as well. So just another avenue. So you either get it or you don't get it, but it's like, I definitely don't want people to think, you know how like when like celebrities or actors try to have their pop pop music career? <laughs> I definitely don't want people to think that I was trying to do that, being like, yeah, I'm really serious about this song, Making Bacon, you should check it out, it's awesome. Like, no, no. The thing I really love about not just any Comic-Con conventions, but more particularly the Supernatural conventions, is that I really love and enjoy the intimacy you get to have with the actors because oftentimes I feel when it comes to just society at large, there's always a divide between the famous people and then the ordinary people, if that makes any sense. And at a supernatural convention, that's not that that's not really there like you have an opportunity to really interact with other the actors can interact with the fans and the fans can interact with the actors on an intimate level to where it's not necessarily like the actors are put on a pedestal and they're this better than you and then you're the peasant that's all the way down here you know, I absolutely love that though, cause oh my gosh, I told you guys this story earlier. Remember when, uh, when at the PJ party, when uh, you went rent a car for Cards Against Humanity, and it was um, what ended Sam's last relationship, and I ran. And then up you to charged hug. me from across the room. I know. I just, no, because it was because it was like because it was like it was a secret word. It was relationship, and then I ran up, and yeah, but it's fun. look. I will take a free hug. I just didn't know it was coming. And it was <laughs> you know what? You read a Sam card. You got two Sams, and then one Sam charged after you. Yeah, it, and it then was, we did all that stuff, it though. It was a whole Sam. Uh, again, it goes back to I am a people person. I am uh, insatiably curious about people's stories. Um, love to get to know people. Uh, love to talk about art, like to talk about storytelling. It's why I got into this business, because I think uh, you said it off the top. Like, art can be comfort food. It can change people's lives. It can change people's philosophies. Storytelling and creation is just incredibly delicious. And to have be on a show that I really had nothing to do with, other than I came in and served, hopefully, kind of interesting character or story. Um, but it's, it's that interaction of, of hearing people who are like, I really dug that moment or like that really worked for me. And I've been like really into this thing and thanks for joining the show. And just, just seeing again, kindness and interest and storytelling. What? What's the story you're not telling me? Charlie was like family. She was a sister to me. She did more for me and Sam than I could even say. And she was, she was butchered. And we couldn't get there in time, and I. You feel you failed her? I know I did. And then actually getting to know people at the conventions too as as full human beings by their own right and sort of as you said kind of getting rid of these false ideas of i'm just a, i'm just a human just like you i'm just a working person i you know I, I i don't have any desire to have higher status or or do anything else other than maybe i made this thing that you bought or you consume that you kind of dig but yeah, I really do. I really do like genuine, and again, stressing on the genuine human interaction, not the avatar or the performance of self or uh, online interaction. If that makes sense. The supernatural conventions also gave a safe atmosphere for people who also felt different. I think that because when you're out in the real world, there's a lot of people that won't accept you because you are different and don't care to see past that 
But what I see at Supernatural conventions is that there's a lot of people with different opinions on the show or the episodes or opinions on a lot of different things. But everybody in the Supernatural family still comes together and they come together because of those differences. It doesn't detract from how they connect. What I've said to people like, because there's two people, two kinds of people in the world, right? And you've probably experienced them. There's either like, oh yeah, Supernatural. I kind of heard of that show. Is that still on? You know, like, so, so there's that. Well, now we can say, no, it's not still on. Um, but you're like, oh yeah, it's going into season 15. Or, Holy cow. Right. Well, that's lucky us. What is that? Uh, it fires iron flakes, expelling ghosts without harm to the possessed victim. Courtesy of the British men of letters, I lifted it along with a few other toys when I left. And then you're like, the people who are like, supernatural is my jam. That is my world. It is everything. I, I love everything about it. And here, I mean, everyone's answer is going to be unique and individual, obviously. But I think one of the things that really bonds people about the show other than, you know, like, come on, Jared Jensen and Misha, bunch of hot dudes, uh, doing really cool stuff is the show is completely unique. There's nothing else like that. So there's that, that obviously helps it stand out, but it is about love, family and perseverance. So, and I think that's why the fandom, uh, really has grown up around those, those, those ideals of, sticking together you know always keep fighting like jared says and really taking care of each other um and i see those moments of kindness and support constantly when i'm at the convention so if i had to sum it up i would say it was those qualities now obviously there's a myriad of other reasons and there's little side groups within the giant umbrella that have their own little you know interests or or whatever or or little tribes that, you know, mini tribes that they, they love and enthusiastic about. Um, and you're also allowed to disagree on the show and things you like, you don't like. Um, but that's, I mean, when you've made that much content, it's, it's legendary, it's historical. And everyone's allowed to have their opinion and hopefully that everyone can just share those opinions and find the things they love and, agree to disagree or, or disagree amiably. Uh, my biggest takeaway for me playing catch was um, how much I pushed myself. I really stretched. Uh, I really challenged myself. I was challenged in every way an actor can be challenged. You know, I had to have, I had to be beaten. I had to be broken. I had to do fights. I had to do an accent. I had to um, build rapport about murdering people. I had to be a sociopath or a psychopath. There's still a debate whether it catches a sociopath or a psychopath, which I love, by the way. I love the fact that there's so many wonderful nerds who would discuss whether it's a psychopath or a sociopath. And I say nerds with a capital N, like proud, proud nerd right here. Um, that like inspires me and illuminates me. But yeah, I would say, I would just say I really challenged myself and it was really hard in the best way. Um, and I'll miss that. I'll, I'll miss that opportunity. And then to also feel so supported by your fellow castmates and by the leader, leadership. And that includes, you know, the executive producers, the directors, the showrunners, the writers and the crew. Just to feel supported in, in me really trying to do something good you know, and pushing myself, that's, you don't get those opportunities that often in life, you know, and then to also have a community that would really supports you. So whew, I'll be, uh, I'll be forever grateful. Going into 2021 without any new supernatural content or episodes or another season to watch, it's a, it is a, it is kind of a scary thought to know that a show that you would be growing up with for 15 years isn't going to be there anymore and it feels scary but what i think is special about supernatural is that supernatural is not limited to the show and i think jensen ackle says it best the show may end 
but its family and what it created, that will never end. Because that is far more significant, more powerful, and more meaningful than the episodes ever will. Here, here. Uh, Y'all have made something incredibly special. I'm just an interloper coming in on the last, you know, few seasons trying to trying to do my little shtick. Um, but the amount of I have experienced has been on the whole incredibly positive. So, yeah. Near as I can tell, we have two choices. All right, we can think about what's coming, or we can be grateful for this time that we have together. Now me, I choose grateful. So to whatever brought us together, we owe you one. Amen. 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 <laughs> Silence. I've been far too long alone. I've been too long without summer in this winter home. Still, if we can make the effort, if we take the time, maybe we can leave this much behind. Yeah.